Welcome to a new video in my home automation series. And um, when I started reviewing the Shelly Plus uh, series, the two Shelly Plus and Plus One PM, um, I said that one of the new features is scripting and I want to revisit scripting. And uh, this is what I'm planning to do in this video because I spent some time on looking at how the scripting works, what you can do here. And I was always um, a big fan of scripting. If you remember the main reason I favored ESP Easy because it had an internal scripting language. And then uh, the new Shelly Plus series, so this is the Gen 2 device API, also has scripting. So if you read here, then it says that this is something that is included in the Mongoose OS. This is what uh, the Shelly framework is based on. So I don't know whether this is something that they could just enable and it comes with the OS or this is something that they really added because um, I think the, um, the documentation is, um, well, it is fairly simple at the moment and also it is lacking some of the things that I would like to be included or explained at least. There is a whole, you know, rundown of how you create, how you create scripts and, and it takes you through an example and goes through a couple of things, how you can create uh, uh, HTTP calls and RPC calls and, and timers and stuff. But when you go into the script language features, it talks an awful lot about, you know, like how you use variables and stuff. But uh, then on some of the other things, for example, here, it, um, I feel that the documentation is, is, you know, really basic and it doesn't explain some of the things that I wanted to do. For example, if I can access the MQTT stack uh, from the script, because at the moment it looks like it is uh, not possible. And in order to get uh, scripting, first of all, you need to check the version because at the moment 0.8.1 is the official version for the Shelly Plus line. But there is also a 0.9.0 beta 2 version available, which you had to have to install separately because it is a beta. And that's the only, well, that's the first version where the scripting is enabled. So once you install that, and this is only available in the web uh, interface, so don't look at your phone. So, you know, once you point your web browser to the IP address of your Shelly, you will see that there is a new icon available here, uh, which says script. And it's the same on my other Shelly as well. So both of them are uh, running 0.9. I'm guessing once, you know, version 1.0 comes out, it will include the scripting, but for some reason it is not at the moment. So you have to install the beta. And uh, this is where you can create script. And it is somewhat similar to ESP Easy that you can have multiple scripts and then you can just decide whether you want to stop or start a particular script. And also there is a toggle switch here, which says enable. What this actually does, uh, it is not documented, but this is how I understood it. This is like the auto start. So only the ones that are enabled will automatically start when you restart your Shelly. So definitely don't forget to enable something that you want to run all the time. And just going back to the documentation, I wanted to say that, I mean, there is a fair bit of information here because there is a separate section how I use the script language. But what is more important, which is, I think it's me mentioned somewhere here. Uh, yeah, it's here when it says Shelly call. Then um, with this Shelly call method, you can pretty much call any RPC method of your um, device. And then if you scroll further down, this is where you can see all the RPC calls. So for example, if you want to um, monitor or handle the switches, uh, like, I mean, these would be your outputs. You can see that you have uh, things like uh, switch to toggle, so change the uh, state of the output, or you can have uh, switch dot set, and this is what I'm going to be using here. So there is a lot of th stuff here. For example, in the Wi-Fi, you can check the Wi-Fi network. There is a section on MQTT, but as you can see, all you need, all you can do here is check whether you are connected to the MQTT server or what is the MQTT configuration. But for example, I wasn't able to subscribe to a new topic that I can handle in a script. This is something that I wanted to do. So let's go back and let's go through some of the examples that I managed to put together. And of course you can read the documentation as, as well. So the first one that I implemented on the OnePlus is, sorry, the OnePlus PM is a simple cycle. And here I just wanted to uh, use the uh, event callbacks. So the event callback functionality, which is, I mean, it is fairly simple. You create an event or a timer handle, 
and then you set up a timer, you specify the frequency, so this is uh, 1000 milliseconds, and true is continuous, and whenever this timer is called, this is the function get, which gets called. And you create a function, and in that you call a Shelly RPC call. This is what I just mentioned before, and I uh, call the switch.toggle, and ID0 is the first output. I mean, the 1PM just has one output, so that's fine and all the other parameters are null. And sorry, one thing I missed that if you are using scripting in the device and a debug, I enable this WebSocket debug, and that basically enables this, uh, the debugging here. So uh, at this moment, this script is not running, so I can choose here to save and run. And then once that happens, we can see that the output keeps toggling. So very simple. It doesn't do anything more than that. And I can just stop this script whenever I want. And again, if you want this to automatically start when you start your Shelly, you can enable it. And I thought maybe I'm just going to do a little bit more complicated. I'm going to do an asymmetric cycle as well. And here I also created a callback function. And in that callback function, I check um, what is the current state of the output. And if it's on, then I uh, turn off the relay and I start a one second timer, which again calls the same callback. And, but as you can see, false, so it already creates one uh, timer event. And if the output is off, then I am, well, sorry, if the output is on, then I'm going to turn off the output. So now I'm not calling switch.set, sorry, not switch.toggle, but I'm calling the switch.set. And again, you have to pass the ID and the state that you want the output to be set to. And then in that case, um, you know, once it is off, uh, then I call an off delay of two seconds. So it's going to be on for one second and off for two seconds. And if I save and run this one, now we can see that it's an asymmetric cycle. And here I also use the print uh, command, and as you can see, the result gets printed here into the script console. So again, using two timers and using a fairly different RPC call to um, you know, tell the Shelly what to do. Uh, the next event or the next example is an event callback. So here in the documentation, I think this is probably one of the most important one is um, event callbacks. So you can register an event handle to an event that happens on the Shelly or um, if there is a status update that happens on the Shelly. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to create an event callback when I press the button. So at the moment this button is configured to be disconnected from the output. So in the input settings you can set it to detached. So if I press this button, nothing, well, something happens because I have a script, but normally uh, the button doesn't control the output anymore. So let me go back to the scripts. Actually, I want to stop this. So this is the event handler or the event handler example. It has a timer as well. So the timer uh, callback does the same asymmetric cycle that we just have seen. And now I also added this event callback. And here in the event callback, you get a user data object. And in that user data or uh, in the dot info dot event, you can check what was the event. So for example, a button down. So I press this button. So I know that there is a button uh, down event. And once I detected the button, uh, button down event, I can switch a toggle a state, an internal state that I defined here as a sort of global variable. And if the state is on, so if I pressed it once, so I turn it on, then I start the event, uh, the timer callback, which starts the whole cycle. And if I press it again, then I just clear the timer. So timer.clear, and then um, I pass the timer handle. And, um, you know, once, um, in order to uh, register for the event callback, you just call shelly.addEventHandler, and then the function name of the event handler, which is here. And then the user data, that's the one that gets passed. So if I run this, let me clear. So now this script is running, so it is listening to the button down event. So if I press this button, 
then it starts the asymmetric cycle. And there is a lot of information printed here because I print the whole user data. So you can see what are the different events that had passed here. So obviously I'm getting a, an event whenever I press the button. I also get an event when I release the button, sort of like in a, in a half a second. And there are some other events as well. So you can look at this code to see what events are available or what, how you can trigger stuff. And now if um, you know, the cycle is running and if I press the button again, then it just stops the timer. Again, very simple, but uh, I mean, with this, you can, you know, influence the behavior, what the, the button actually does. So if you, if you want the button to do a, something a little bit more complicated than, you know, just turning the output on or off, you can use this type of event handler method. So this is now stopped. The next one is the remote script call. So what I wanted to do here, which it was uh, fairly easy to do in ESP Easy, that something happens on this e uh, Shelly, and I call an event on the other Shelly. So if I look at my plus one, it also has an um, event, sorry, also have a, has a script, which is a simple flasher. So that's the one second on and off flasher. It's exactly the same code as uh, what we have seen before. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to call that. So when I press, so when I call the event on this Shelly, it actually calls an event on that Shelly. So let me go back. And it is possible by using this uh, method, which is uh, uh, called the Shelly.call. And this is an HTTP.get call. And uh, that's the URL. So if you want to start a script using a URL, you can do this, so HTTP and IP of the device slash RPC slash script dot start and question mark ID equals one. Um, so far, I haven't really figured out how I can influence the ID of the script, but I, I figured that, you know, once the first one that you create uh, becomes one, the second one becomes two. So that's the first one in the list. So if I just uh, save and run this, um, so I was running this script on the Shelly 1 PM, but then the script is actually executed on the Shelly 1. So this is how I can execute a script on a remote device. And by the way, I can do this using simple URLs as well. So if I want to stop this script now, then I just uh, call script.stop and then it stops. So I combined the two, the event handler and the remote call script uh, to this one. Um, actually, let me stop this now. And also let me stop this now. So that last example is the um, combination of the two. So there is also an event handler uh, specified, so event handler registered. And in the event callback function, I'm again checking whether this is a button done event and I'm flipping the state, and if the state is one, so I want to, I'm turning on something, that I call the script on the other device to start the blinking cycle, and on the current device, or uh, sorry, on this device, I also create a simple RPC call, and I switch on the output, and once I press the button again, so the whole thing turns off, then I stop the script on this device and I turn off the output on this device. So if I save and run, now if I press this button, I get some messages here as well, but you can see that the cycle starts here and the output turns on this one. And if I press it again, then the output turns off and the cycle stops on the other device. So yeah, you can control multiple devices at the same time. So I think this is, uh, that's good. This could be useful. And, and again, I mean, um, you can do similar functions with the webhook as well. Um, but, um, so maybe even on the webhook, you can just, you know, call a URL on the other device, which stops and starts the script. But if you want to include multiple, um, events or sorry multiple actions at the same time maybe it's just easier to do it in script so it's up to you 
And uh, the last example is also related to the web service, so the HTTP call, but I wanted to use a different web service. So I just found this random web service, which you can pass this URL, it doesn't require um, an IP, and it just gives me this JSON back. So it generates some data. So I said, okay, let me build this very simple and stupid example. So it calls this RPC, so sorry, it calls this web service, and um, uh, once the data is returned, once the response code is 200, so the data is successfully returned, then I check the response body, which is going to be this JSON, and then I convert it to uh, JSON, and then I check the age. And if the age is more than 25, then the output is going to turn on. And if it's less than 25, then the output is going to tur be turned off. So if, uh, so if I s run this one, we just have to wait for a couple of seconds. Uh, this is how it long it took to call the web service. And now the output is on. If I stop this, and let's increase the value. And if I run it again, then you can see that it turns off. So this is just an example, but I thought what maybe what you can do is combine this uh, HTTP GET call in um, in a timer callback. Maybe have a timer callback which executes once an hour, and then uh, the, in this web service maybe you can call a weather web service and you can check whether the um, I don't know, the chance of rain is more than 50% and turn your lights on. So you have an, a device which checks the Orvedo service every hour and then it turns a lamp on, letting you know that it is likely to rain outside. So you, you know, if you leave, you should pack an umbrella. Or you can do this with temperatures and something else as well. And uh, I mean, you know, if you have some sort of integration like Home Assistant to Node-RED, you can certainly do this on the server side, but it is just nice that you can do it on the device as well. So, so let's say that you implement this uh, script on the Shelly and then you take this Shelly and you, you move it to your grandparents or something and you, know, you don't have to set up a server, it's just going to run because the entire logic runs on the Shelly. So these are the examples that I managed to do in a short period of time. Uh, exploring how I can use MQTT would have been nice because I thought maybe I can build a device where the button um, toggles the output in one way but then if you call a special topic or if you send a special message to a topic, then the output can be behave on a different way. Let's say, you know, if you just press the button, you can toggle the output between on and off. But then if you spend, send a special message over MQTT, then it's going to flash. So I think there are a couple of ideas how you can do that. Or maybe like, you know, this is a normal switch. So you turn it on, turn it off, but then you can send an MQTT message which uh, just starts a timer, so then it automatically turns off after five minutes. So like, you know, sort of like leaving the house routine. Um, whenever you leave the house, you turn on one switch and it sends these messages to a lot of different Shelly devices, and then it instructs them to turn automatically off after five minutes, even if they are on. I mean, you can do this with script calling, but uh, that is uh, somewhat um, limited in terms of you need to like call each device so, so you sort of have to hard code each device IP into the device which sends out the message but again if you have some sort of home automation system probably you can send it out automatically to all light switches uh, and then all of them would be included in that message or it's just a you know special topic that every device listens to so you send one message and then everyone says like oh okay i need to turn off in five minutes and they will turn off in five minutes so using mqtt would be nice as well but i think with these examples you can already do device to device communication directly which is i think it's nice if you're interested in any of these, there is going to be a download link in the video description where I'm going to include each of these scripts in some sort of text file. So you can just copy and paste the code and create your own uh, scripts on your Shelly Plus device. I think that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.